Well, hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bacor, your host for episode 67, trying to see cover what's going on on the EV landscape around the world. So I've got a few stories to talk about. Thanks very much for taking the time out of your busy day to tune in for a few minutes to watch the show. First story I want to talk about is uh, breaking news that just happened yesterday. Uh, PSA and Fiat Chrysler, FCA, agree on a merger. And that's pretty big news in the automotive landscape because what that is going to do is it's going to make that organization the fourth largest automobile manufacturer in terms of sales globally. Now that will make them fourth after number one Volkswagen, number two Toyota, and number three Renault-Nissan. Um, their target sales is 8.7 million vehicles per year, so almost 9 uh, million vehicles per year. And obviously the, re the reasons for mergers and acquisition acquisitions are usually because somebody has something better than the other guy or they're looking to combine efforts and save some costs. And the latter part is what's going on here for PSA and FCA. Um, they uh, want to um, merge their costs and be able to be competitive over the long term. So I guess they're obviously FCA is seeing some sales slip in different markets. Um, the good thing about this merger is that it's going to generate synergies without closing a plant. So there won't be any layoffs or any job jobs being affected. Now, how this affects the EV landscape is unclear because, of course, PSA uh, launched the introduced uh, the Peugeot E208 and the Opel Corsa E. Uh, and they're coming out with a heavier model called the DS3 Crossback. These are all electrified vehicles. Now, Fiat Chrysler doesn't really have much in the electric vehicle bandwagon or stables, I guess, other than the Fiat 500, which is an all-electric version. But they've got some plug-in hybrid electric vehicles in the Jeep Renegade and Compass, which tend to sell pretty good in Europe and so-so in North America. Most of North American guys like their gas uh, Jeeps. So anyway, stay tuned for more news, but that's exciting to see shakeups in the landscape where it makes sense. And let's hope that these two organizations will really look to drive more efforts into automobile electrification. Quick update from an organization that I received. I'm on their mailing list. I'm receiving information from an organization called Drive Electric. They're based in the UK out of London. And um, they are working with, as an advisory type of council, advisory board, working with um, the folks in London um, and to help the city and the municipality meet World Health Organization targets of air quality guidelines by 2030. And they sent me an announcement about uh, Drive Electric are, is working with the Transport for London, or TFL as it's known over there, to offer micro businesses and charities a switch to pure electric vehicles. Now, this is in conjunction with the mayor of London's new van scrappage scheme. That's a mouthful to say. So a switch which really could save businesses and owners over six and a half thousand pounds a year or per van, excuse me, cost per year, in addition to a grant of six thousand pounds. Um, so really anyone who's driving into London's core into their ULEZ zone um, every working day with an older diesel van um, faces a bill of about 480 pounds each month for doing that. These are these are called congestion charges, and I'm sure folks in the UK are nodding their head as I'm talking about that. So that can be quite substantial. So with this support from this organization, it's possible to provide business uh, businesses uh, vehicles in London's businesses um, for under about 100 pounds a month. You can get some attractive leasing and some financing, and then when you add in some of the grants and stuff, and then factor in fuel savings and vehicle maintenance and those congestion charges that you would normally pay it really makes going all electric in London an irresistible as they say quote unquote proposition and I totally agree good on London to take some initiatives and I'm glad that there are programs in place to help businesses especially small business owners small to medium sized business owners move into a better ways of uh, transportation into electrification quick story about Kia and Hyundai got it right right Sunday Hyundai. Hyundai. There we go. Now I got it. Hyundai. Uh, I've been getting a lot of flack on that. Uh, story just quickly that they plan to sell more than 500,000 EVs annually by 2025. That's only about five years, folks. 
Um, so it's great to see that they've got a, a, a plan to get over half a million electrified vehicles into the global sales funnel by within the next five years. That also includes the Genesis line as well. They're going to offer a much more electrification in that line. Um, and this is going to be done gradually, folks. They're going to increase to about 560,000 annually by 2025, which is currently 17 times more, uh, or the prediction is, is 17 times more than what they currently do, about 33,000 in 2018. We don't have 2019 numbers yet. Um, so that's uh, that's uh, on the backs of the South Korean manufacturer uh, launching 16 plug-in models by 2025. So they definitely um, have their arms stretched out and they're embracing electrification and they really want to grow the market. I hope them all the best. Get that supply chain sorted out. That's all I have to say because I'm sure many of you were thinking, oh, great, they want to pump out half a million EVs or more, but where are they going to get all the batteries from because they're having problems today? Totally agree with you. They got to work out the supply chain metrics. They got to hammer down battery suppliers, open multiple contracts, maybe even look at helping, uh, partially insourcing, partnering with somebody, putting a lot of dollars behind this. It does take a lot of dollars to get into that marketplace. It's something you just can't jump into right away. But, um, you know, uh, 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 Hyundai, uh, Kia, and Genesis have to get there if they're going to meet these kind of targets. They really have to figure all that stuff. But I, I'm glad that they're they're sharing these numbers and that they have a focus and they have, a for, again, forward thinking, embracing the EV landscape. So we'll just have to wait and see. Quick update about Byton. I talked about them a couple of shows ago. They're certainly continuing to move forward. The Chinese electric car manufacturer has started production of the pre-production series of the m -Byte model as at its uh, Nanjing plant in China. They've already actually, this number caught me by surprise, have 50,000 reservations and climbing worldwide. That's pretty good uh, just for something that's just getting into pre-production mode. I thought... Uh, that's really good because I counted these guys out about a year and a half ago. So I'm glad to see that they're back and back with a vengeance. Now, of course, the m is going to be another attractive um uh, element to the m is what they call entry-level pricing of about 45,000 euros, excluding VAT and any government subsidies. I think when you factor in some gov government subsidies, you can definitely bring that in under 40,000 euro. I don't think that's um, entry level pricing personally myself I, I think 40,000 euros or 35,000 euros is not but people may argue that I'd love to see these prices even lower that's based on a 200 kilowatt model uh, rear engine or sorry rear motor drive um, with a 72 kilowatt hour battery pack giving WLTP range of about 360 kilometers 200 mile or so club as always uh, and they plan on coming out with a four wheel drive configuration as well they're anticipating that Chinese customers will receive the M-Bytes first by the middle of next year, and then Europe and North America are to follow by a year later, by about the middle part of 2021. So very interesting, but at least they looks like they're moving steps forward. They're also um, in negotiations with potential retail elements for after-sales uh, support through partners um, in all relevant EU markets and uh, global markets, of course. Uh, they're talking to people, for example, in Sweden, France, and Portugal, and Switzerland, as far as oh, like dealer networks, service networks, all that kind of stuff. They're, they're looking to form alliances and partnerships and put that out there. So don't be surprised if you see a Byton dealership or somebody representing that brand in the next year or so pop up in your neck of the woods in Europe specifically. Um, no news uh, about if that's happening in North America, but I would suspect that they would find those same alliances here across the pond. Um, so stay tuned for more information. If anybody has a Byton on, on order, on reservation, I'd love to hear from you. You can tell me as you go through the process how things are working for you. Quick article about mini U.S. pricing was announced about a week ago for the Cooper SE All-Electric, and it starts at an MSRP under $30,000 U.S. at $29,900. Now, what caught me, that's okay, but what really caught me by surprise is that if you combine some U.S. federal tax credits, which they will fully qualify for, of course, the starting credit amount, and some state electric vehicle taxes, which in some states can be pretty high, I understand, the price could drop as low as 17900 U.S., 
Um, boy, that's pretty good. <laughs> now you're talking the under $20,000 EV. doesn't have to have a whole boatload of range, especially for the Mini, which is more of an urbanish type of vehicle. But that's definitely going to get attention, and it's also going to start being uh, for sale in the U.S. Uh, in March, so in, in about a quarter, just about four months or so. You know, if you can get it for under 20 k I think that's going to be an awesome choice. The build quality will be solid. It'll be a fun car to drive. There's no doubt about that. It'll have a lot of pluses to it. I just think for what you get, the pricing is a bit high. But hey, you know, Mini is not a low-end um, automobile manufacturer either. They're more of a premium vehicle, so it is to be expected that the price point is going to be a bit high. But I'm glad to see that they're trying. Give them credit for that. Now, if you happen to be down in the Los Angeles area, and of course my, my uh, prayers and... Uh, uh, best wishes go out to everybody in California at this point in time who are suffering from those horrendous fires that are going on. I, I lived in L.A. for a couple of years way back when, went to high school there. Uh, so I know how dry and how those winds can be in, in, in these particular times. Um, I didn't experience any fires like it's going on now, but certainly there were things in other parts of the state. So I get it. Um, so really take care if you're down there and I wish you all the best. But if you if you do happen to get to the Peterson Automotive Museum in Los Angeles uh, this month in November, um, you can check out a Volkswagen's um, exhibit. Uh, it's called the New Electric Future Focused Exhibit from Volkswagen. And it's built, it's, it's, uh, the title is actually Building an Electric Future, but it gives an inside look at their version of uh, mobility through the use of interactive and virtual reality experiences now they're going to kick this off on wednesday november the 20th so if you happen to be in la and want to go check out the peterson automobile museum uh, please do on that date uh, they're going to actually uh, do a kickoff of their next new id concept vehicle i guess it'll be the id5 i'm not sure we got the three and we got the four so i'm guessing it's either going to be a more serious production version of the buzz uh, which was the van, if I've got that right, or they're going to have something else. I saw a rendering on another article, and I think it might be more in line with the ID4, more of a larger SUV-ish type thing. So we'll have to wait and stay tuned. But they're going to be unveiling that at that at that exhibit event. Uh, so Wednesday, November 20th. And again, they're going to go through you know uh, methods of how they came up with the modular electric uh, drive matrix or the MEV platform, as it's called. Ways that they can build it, talk about manufacturing, talk about assembly, talk about what driving may look like in the future, autonomous driving techniques and technologies, all that kind of stuff, interior technology and all and so forth. So so you can go to www.peterson.org to look to learn more about the museum and about that exhibit. But again, just another way for VW to go out there. Obviously, they're they're out there promoting their own brand. There's there's definitely selfish reasons, but the unselfish uh, other elements to this is that they are out there uh, and they're promoting electrification to an open consumer base. And I think that's a good thing because I've talked about the need for education and, and enlightenment in this marketplace. There's going to be a lot of positive come that. So if anybody does go to the event, I'd love for you if you could email me a quick summary, maybe take a picture or two and I'll put it on the show. Appreciate that. All right, speaking of emails and sending me pictures, it's mailbag time. I haven't had mailbag for a little bit. Glad to finally have something to share with you. Now, I've got a couple things. First of all, um, just a big shout out to uh, Chris in the UK. Um, Chris sent me this picture here that you see of him and his friend, a couple of fine gentlemen, Chris and Terry, um, who I met at Fully Charged Live, I believe twice. I believe we met the first time I was there last year, but I know... I definitely remember us meeting this year, Chris, and I thank you for coming out and saying hi. Chris is also a Patreon supporter and a regular emailer or at least a commenter on the YouTube uh, comment, so I appreciate his input. But he and Terry finally got their first ever electric vehicles that they own in a couple of beautiful Model 3s. So here's their picture with their EV grin. See, it's just, you got to have that EV grin. It's just part of it. It's, you don't have to pay extra for that. It comes with every EV. So, uh, you know, I'm glad that they, uh, and, and they thank me a little bit for, uh, the, uh, for the success that I was able to educate them with, uh, uh, and of course, two ice tailpipes being replaced with EVs. Um, it gives a big thanks to me for people like me and others who have a big following. Again, I'm I'm kind of small potatoes when it comes to the YouTube side of things versus some of the other folks out there, which, you know, again, we have a purpose of trying to educate minds um, to get those changes and to get people away from tailpipes. Um, but I do appreciate the feedback, Chris. And, um, and, and, you know, now that he's an owner, he can help spread. He and Terry can help spread the EV word as well. So 
congratulations, uh, Chris and Terry, all the best. And I look forward to uh, seeing you guys again. Uh, hopefully next time I, I get out to Fully Charged Live. And also in the mailbag is a quick video review. Now, I've edited this this review down for time just to a couple of minutes, but a, a viewer uh, that has been communicating with me for quite some time now, uh, this is Kieran in the, the UK. Um, Kieran was on the waiting list for the new MG ZS EV that has come out now, and uh, he finally got his MG, and I said, hey, you know, once you get it, send me a quick uh, either... A picture or a, an article or something well he went up to it and, and did a quick a video for me um, just to kind of articulate some of his experiences when he went to pick up his MGS ZS or ZS as you want to call it um, so here's a quick look at that video MG have just released the new ZS EV in the UK but is it any good and how far will it go on a charge we've been down to Richmond MG in Southampton to take a look the ZS is an affordable SUV which has been a missing market segment in the UK where affordable EVs have typically been mid-size hatchbacks or city cars so this is a very welcome EV addition for families who are looking for a spacious vehicle with an electric drivetrain. Other than the EV badge on the back there is little to distinguish it from its petrol powered brethren. The boot is one of the largest in its class with a respectable 470 litres of capacity with the seats up and a whopping 1100 litres with the seats folded down. It also has a neat adjustable floor that allows for either flat lip entry or deeper storage capacity. No storage in the front though. Inside the spec is far better than its petrol siblings. It comes with a good selection of tech including Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, adaptive cruise control, lane assist and a half decent stereo with a DAB radio. The driver's display is well laid out with speed and power dials providing a clear readout. The centre console has a nice tactile gear selector and nice physical buttons for drive mode, regenerative braking and battery information. The car is powered by a lithium ion liquid cooled battery giving 44.5 kilowatts of usable energy. The charge port is at the front of the car and supports 7.4 kilowatts AC type 2 charging and a DC CCS charger capable of charging 60 kilowatts of charge speed. But that's not usually reflective of how well cars do on a motorway, so we did our own tests, and here are the results. It still managed to achieve a calculated maximum range of 125 miles at 2.8 miles per kilowatt hour. It is no surprise that MG are taking a lot of orders for the MG ZS EV. It has good interior space, good build quality and good tech. But the real trump card that it plays is its price. At under £22,000 starting price, this car really is a bargain compared to the competition. But those vehicles that are competing against it that do have more range are significantly more expensive. It's likely that this vehicle is going to be a good seller. All right. Well, thanks, Karen, for that video. That's great. Congratulations again on joining the EV revolution. As I say to everybody who lets me know when they get an EV, I appreciate that. You're going to have loads of fun in that car. It's a great vehicle, definitely a great get around and, and a very cost effective uh, all electric vehicle from what I understand. And you know what? I think that that's the end of the show. That's it for this episode of the EV revolution show episode 67 already done and almost in the can I get, of course as always I want to thank everybody for watching and commenting and if you haven't uh, commented please do if you have something else to say if you have commented continue to comment it's all good for me I would love it if you could like the channel and of course more I'd love it if you could subscribe and don't forget you could click that bell and get automatically notified when I push out a new show of uh, on YouTube so please do so thank you everybody for watching of course humble thanks to my patreon supporters uh, continue continue to be always thankful for that um, and if you are interested in supporting patreon go check out my channel if you're interested in making a one-time donation just reach out to me and i can give you some different ways to do that and all that kind of stuff thank you very much it means a lot to me as i continue to try to build this show looks like i'm going to be a little short on my on my goal of 10,000 followers subscribers by the end of this year i'm, I'm approaching around the 70 800 or so mark which is great i'm not certainly disliking that i was hoping to kind of get to 10,000 uh, at my my steady but slow turtle rate of increase i don't think i'm going to get there but i do appreciate everybody 
already for subscribing. If you do like the channel, please tell others about it as well. I'd love for them to subscribe. Don't forget, Fully Charged Live coming up in uh, under a couple, under three months now in February 1st and 2nd in Austin, Texas of early next year. I'll be there. I'm already booked. I'm ready to rock and roll. I know a few Canadians are going to be coming down there to say hi and join me. And if you are going, please use this coupon code to get 15% off the ticket price and have a bit of savings and if you do go out and you watch my show please find me hunt me down and say hi and, and i'd love to hear your ev experience i will have two days to talk to people and that's what i love about these shows is i love listening to people's experiences about their ev journey so uh, please find me and that seems to be it for this edition as i mentioned of the ev revolution show things are happening the movement's continuing to move uh, and again if you have something to say or want something you want me to check out don't hesitate to send me an email or reach out to me don't forget follow me on twitter i am on twitter and most of my activity is all on twitter i have an instagram but i don't really do too much on instagram most of the stuff that i want people to kind of hear from me on is uh, twitter based when i'm not doing the shows in between shows so i encourage you to follow up i will be doing some more audio podcasts as well i've had a couple people ask about those no i haven't forgot about them they're always on my mind it's just finding somebody to talk to and organizing a time to do that and I was supposed to actually tape one today, but that uh, time frame got changed for another couple of weeks uh, for scheduling. So I will continue to do that. And don't forget, um, next week uh, or th this next week coming up, if you search for a podcast called Plugged, Plugged In by Andrew McCready, uh, he's a Canadian based out of Vancouver, and he started an electric vehicle or electrified podcast. Go check it out on iTunes or all the other podcast providers. I'm coming up on episode five of that, uh, but it was a great conversation I had with Andrew, and I want to thank him for uh, reaching out to me and, and having me on his inaugural podcasts. He's only done a few, so check it out, and please subscribe to that podcast and tell your friends about it. Really interesting guy. He's got some good... So I, I listened to the first couple, and they've been great. Really, really good stuff. So uh, eye-opening stuff. Listen to Andrew. Andrew and his and thanks again for that and again everybody please take care thank you very much for watching and until I see you next time whenever that is everybody stay safe and uh, I'll see you then take care bye bye